pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. In his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off. Then along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on the island of Sodor. We will pull you out, said Sir Topham Hatt. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. They grumbled. The other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas who wanted to pull a train, but forgot about the coaches. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about the freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful. All right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss, grumbled the cars. He was very rough at the grumbling coaches as he brought them to the platform. Don't talk. Come on. I'll show them, he thought. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. You're going too fast. You're going too fast, replied the coaches. James laughed and tried to go faster. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We'll do it with newspaper and a leather bootlace, replied the driver. But well, where is the bootlace coming from, asked the conductor. Ask the passengers, said the driver. The passengers all said what a bad railway it was. Then they told the man how bad he was instead. Everyone was very cross. The driver tied a pad of newspaper tightly round the hole in the brake pipe. But he was a sadder and wiser James and took care never to bump coaches again. Train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. There was Gordon. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam. Gordon can't do it. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir. I'll try. So James was coupled on and... Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling us well, you're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Freight cars. They had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. The big engines thought they were too important to fetch coaches. James grumbled too. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack, you're lazy and slack, they answered. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Topham had it made them so that the tender engines can be turned round. That night, the three engines had an indignation meeting. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. He jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you wished him, laughed Edward. You have to wish loudly to make yourself heard. Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. Little tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call. And they got very cross. The two engines are now good friends. But Percy is always most careful when he goes out on the main line. One winter evening, Henry's driver said, We'll be out early tomorrow. We've got to take the flying kipper. But we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. All the lights went off. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Cross with James and Percy for causing so much trouble. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. So now he set off first. Signalman at the junction wasn't told about the change. He sent Edward along the main line. Gordon was... He found it hard to start the heavy train, remarked James. Just pathetic. We're off. I've done it. We're off, said Edward, as he finally puffed out of the station. Bill and Ben were delighted to see the visitors. They loved being photographed. Later, they took the party to the China Clay Works in a brake van special. A 
On the way, the weather changed. Wind and rain buffeted Edward. Please. And with a shrieking crack, something broke. The crew inspected the damage. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. The passengers were anxious. The driver, fireman, and conductor went along the train, making adjustments between the coaches. We've loosened the couplings, Edward. Now you can pick up your coaches one by one, just as you do with freight cars. The first coach moving helped to start the second, and the second helped the third. And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely ahead. At last, battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. Beep! Beep! You're going too fast! You're going too fast! replied the coaches. James laughed and tried to go faster, but